Hey there, greetings and welcome to Grow Ring of Farms. Would you like to learn how to start a farm or begin making a living from plants? Well, I'd love to help you out. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of my farm and if you need extra support and you wanna get a call back from me, text COLLECTIVE to 813-567-3100. Let's go ahead and take a quick little tour of my farm and I'll show you exactly how I got started making a living from plants. Have you heard of the Moringa tree before? Well, this is how I started making a living from plants. And it is a main source of income for me as I begin to grow into other forms of income with say turmerics and gingers and potatoes and bananas and all the other things that I love growing as well. But most people know me for Moringa and that's because I've stuck to the guns. I've kept it very simple. I've kept it so that way everybody knows me for exactly one thing. And so now everybody comes to me for this one plant. And so one of the things that you wanna do is just focus in on exactly maybe your top five plants that you would grow for an income. Now let's go ahead and continue taking you on a tour and show you around this little farm that I began started about two, three years ago. Wonderful. This was the lowest part of the property here. And I began to dig a hole here and put the sink water drainage in this very, very low spot, retention pond, so to speak, and then planted my bananas all around. This beautiful banana circle has been pumping out bananas. I haven't had to buy bananas in two years. I started with say 10 bananas around here. And the trick to growing bananas is to always cut back your little pups. These little pups that are here, I'm always cutting them back and I'm just leaving the main ones. This is a key, key part in making sure that you have a lot of fruit on your bananas. So we got ourselves a nice little fruit rack right there coming in. I've already put down a couple bananas already this, this week and I got some, some bananas freezing. So that's great. So I have my own supply of bananas. But this is my intensive bed of Moringa trees and I just cut these back and I put the fresh greens on the racks to dry you can see they're already starting to come back. So I cut all the tops off of all this. I planted 3,000 Moringa seeds on this raised bed. Look at this, they're already starting to come back. Beautiful. So I got about nine raised beds here. And they're, they're already starting to come back really, really nice. Got some fresh greens. Oh, look, we got a nice little fig tree, trimmed her back, so that way she bushes out really nicely. And I've got a large Moringa tree at the end of each one of these raised beds. It also has a variety of sweet potatoes. So I'm stacking the functions and I'm putting multiple plants in the same area. Now, this is the raised bed before it was cut back, right? So I've already cut this back once, and this is what's come back, and this has been about a month since they came back. Beautiful. This one just came up from a stick, from a cutting. So I got really good, nice raised beds. Got some mulberries coming in. And each one of my oak trees also has nice turmerics. So begin to expand out and grow turmerics and gingers. Beautiful. Let's go to the other side. This was my intensive part of the farm where I've been having lots of production getting lots and lots of greens. We've got more turmerics. This is going to be my number two. My number two crop is going to be turmeric. And this is actually a remnant of a frost. And a lot of the cuttings didn't come back. This was my hedge, hedge area where I had a lot of cuttings that just kind of came back. A lot of them didn't make it, like none of them even made it in this row at all. But what I'm starting to do now is put a nice big tree at the end of each one of these little rays that are coming out, rays of sunshine that are coming out of the, uh, the oak tree here. So I'm positioning a nice big Moringa tree. You see how I remove the tree out of the ground and when I re replant it and transplant it, I cut it back. This one I didn't even cut back, but this is what happens when you don't come back. I wanted to show you why I go ahead and just cut back everything. So what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll actually cut it back to about here. And then she'll start re-sprouting from there. She's just under a lot of stress. She's gonna lose those leaves anyways. So this little area is gonna end up being 
maybe even by this winter, this will be like my kale garden, my lettuce garden, and uh, a little bit of a hedgerow. Let's go ahead and go directly into the farm now. This is the orchard. And yesterday, I went ahead and started planting some cuttings from my pollinator plants. We've got the Vitex laurel here. We've got the sweet almond here. And so I just put these cuttings right in the ground because it's rainy season and I don't need any irrigation out here during rainy season. But look at these beautiful big mama moringa trees. Just the other day, I went ahead and cut these, these down along the side. So that way I have a low, short, bushy rotunda, a nice tall flowers and drumsticks. And then I'm also creating these rows. I got a double row here, it's 12 feet wide. There's uh, moringa trees on both sides. You can see you got a mama moringa tree here, and then 10 feet down, there's another tree, and then 10 feet down, there's another tree. In the middle, I planted cuttings, and this is a tree that just came up in one year. So I dumped mulch all on this field here over the last two, three years, and I'll show you exactly what it looked like two years ago. But now we've got a nice little row of moringas coming up here, little moringa seedlings. I just put a nice little centerpiece of moringa sprouts in the middle. You can see they're starting to come up because by the end of the year, they're going to be large like this and I can sell them as mature moringa trees on the website for $50 a piece. Like this, this was last year's seedlings. And now I pull these out every day and we get orders for mature moringa trees and we just pull them right out of the ground and ship them with no soil as is because they'll re-sprout. You see, I'm working with lots of mulch. And look at this baby. She's come up. This is now that's uh, the result of a frost. But what happens after a frost is that they re-sprout. So that's really beautiful. And I'm starting to cut these trees back to get them some space in the middle. The next, after this starts to re-sprout a little bit, you can see, oh, it's only been a couple days. She's already starting to re-sprout there. A little bit. I'll go ahead and cut this back here. Oh look, she's already starting to pu push out some buds right there and right there. So what I'll do is I'll probably, after a few weeks after those are pushed out, then I'll get these really short and then I'll harvest these greens as well. So we've got one row. You can see I put turmerics there under that tree. I'm putting turmeric underneath each tree, right? And those are sprouting. I was digging in there the other day. A big old black snake came up and said, hey, what's up to my face? <laughs> That's another Vitex I put in the ground. Um, at the front of each one of these beds, I'm starting to put little things like longevity spinach and, and pineapples, and, and even there's a, uh, a scallion in there. So I'm starting to create a little bit of a companion planting, a little bit of a guild inside of these beds. So we've got 12 foot wide rows, 12 foot wide beds, 12 foot wide rows, 12 foot wide bed and then we come down here and this is what I've been doing the last couple days you can see lots of mulch dropped I dropped lots of mulch lots of mulch and then the use of my sticks so I just went ahead and put the sticks here so that way they don't go to waste these are all the sticks that I harvested and I'm going to go ahead and see if they come back. If not, it's all good, but at least I know they didn't go to waste. They're just in a pile of mulch. It's raining right now every day, so they should be able to form some sort of roots. And this has been a really great project over the last two, three years. Look at all this mulch. I get the trucks coming down here every day and they're just dropping piles and piles of mulch. This is exactly what this field looked like two years ago. Two summers ago, this was all mulch. Just like that, I leveled it and now it looks like this. So what a great little tour of my little farm. I've been able to bring in some income and I really appreciate you for watching and joining. This is just after a cut. And so this is what happens when you cut your trees back a little bit. They start to re-sprout like this. So thanks everybody for watching. Quick little tour of the Grow Moringa Farms. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us on our quick little tour of Grow Ringer Farms. I've had a really great time learning, teaching, 
producing, packaging, harvesting, selling is a big part of farming. And being able to create content is also very important for people to know exactly what is going on. So what I do inside of my agricultural collective is teach people how to grow, harvest, package, and also sell. And it's very important to have continued support and a team, a community of also like-minded growers that are there to help say, yeah, that's great. And also say, hey, this could be done a little bit better because that's exactly what we do together to help each other get to the next level in our farming careers. So we're going to be having an event here September 9th, 9-9. It'll be an all-day event for members, members-only event. It's our second annual members meeting. And I would love for you to join us inside the members area so that way you can get access to the book because we're going to start going over chapters of the book, teaching all of these things that I've been able to accomplish over the last two, three years while establishing my farm and now expanding out to grow other things like gingers, turmerics, bananas, sweet potatoes, and other things that might be able to start create more income here at the farm. Moringa is a pioneer plant. It's how you can get started making an income, but to be able to be more sustainable and to be able to grow other things and to also have a variety of things, you wanna get about five plants going. And I can teach you exactly how to get your farm started. Sign up for membership today so that way you can get in to the Grow Moringa Collective online platform and then join us on September 9th for the second annual members meeting. If you still need a little bit more information about how the collective works, don't hesitate to give me a text message. Text me collective at 813-567-3100 and I'll get back to you right away and give you a little bit more information about how the collective works. I really hope you enjoyed the little tour. I'll talk to you soon. Peace, love, and prosperous growing. Don't forget to like, comment if you have any questions below, and also share this video for anybody who might need to see how to get your farm started. Really appreciate you. Peace. Talk soon.